Hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal and we are live on a Friday evening, which means it's time for us to talk about ah, coping with life. And in particular, on a Friday evening, we like to talk about coping on a budget. And today I'm doing one of the ultimate use up the leftover type meals, which is a stuffed pepper. Now, it doesn't really matter what color pepper you have. You know, some people like green ones, some people like red ones, and some people like orange ones. I'm going to use an orange one today just because it'll give it a bright color, and I like to cook the rainbow if I possibly can. And I've got other colors coming into the color scheme in a second, as you'll see. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, think about whether we want to have a pepper standing up this way and stuffed and if so you're going to cut it across here you're know, just a little bit down from the top or if you want to have it this way and i personally am going to do it this way because i think it looks like more food it's exactly the same amount you understand but psychologically what i like about it is it looks like more food <laughs> and we always like that so here we go I'm going to cut it this way. Okay. And what I'm going to do is take out the center part, including this membrane here and the seeds. Because we want to make room for the good stuff. So let me take out that bit. Take out the stem. This. It's just going to be easier to get the um, seeds out with a spoon. Hi, Iz, and hi, Jody. Good to see you. For those of you who don't know, Jody is our admin, and Iz likes to visit us on a Friday night to see what we're cooking up. That's awesome. So So, so many seeds. So now I want to show you why I made that decision. And it's really psychological. That's the whole thing, all right? If you look at it, let me take the sticker off there. You can either have one stuffed pepper on a plate, right? These are roughly the same size. Or you can have two halves. Now, can you see that psychologically the two halves look like twice as much food as the one standing upright? So if you're trying to reduce the amount that you eat, psychologically, this works really well. Exactly the same size. <laughs> Plus, when you mound, it's easier to mound it up if you want to, all right? 
Jodie's saying an excellent point. Well, Jodie, you know, I, I've seen so many times when they just cut them across the top and I'm going, no, thank you. Me, I want to have mine loaded. <laughs> if I'm going to have a stuffed pepper, I want to load mine up. So I have to look and see what have I got in the kitchen that I'm trying to get rid of this week. Um, how many of you remember the turkey when we cut it? So I got some turkey out. I'm going to do stuffed turkey peppers, turkey stuffed peppers. I've got all sorts of vegetables that I'm going to be using. I've got some, uh, you can probably see, yeah, right there, there, a celery. Um, I buy my celery, even though I'm on my own, I buy the complete stalk and then I keep it in water. And I can keep that for just about a month. Doesn't have to be in the fridge just needs to be in water, and I change the water every other day. So I've got, you know, some tomatoes. I've got some celery leaves. I've got some Brussels sprouts here that I've got, uh, some leeks, some celery stalk, some mashed um, carrot, and some corn. So we've got colors of the rainbow sitting in there pretty much, and more orange going there, so that's good. I've also got a selection of cheeses because we're going to put cheese in. And I've got some leftover brie. And when I say leftover, I'm down to the two ends. Yeah. But it's still got lots of good brie in it. All right. So when I don't know how you eat your brie, I used to do it in nice little segments. It's not the best way to do it, I found. The best way to do it is cut it right down the center and cut your slice and then stick the two bits together again and wrap it back in the paper. <laughs> and it really lasts very you know, much longer for me. You know, if you leave, if you do the segment thing, you've got two sides that are exposed to the air. And I don't like that as much. So here we go. So we've got some brie. We've got some double Gloucestershire cheese, English stuff. Uh, I've also got some Parmesan. Now, a word of warning about Parmesan, should you decide to use it. This is pre-grated, as you can see. But <laughs> when I got it out of the fridge, you know, it had sort of lumped a bit, which it does. So I held it like this and I shook it and I don't know what was wrong. But I ended up <laughs> with Parmesan cheese all over the fridge, all over my floor. It was called... I plow the field and scatter the good seed on the land. You know what I mean? And I went like that and it was everywhere. You know, I went like that hard because I wanted to get rid of the lumps. Don't do that. All right. So there we go. Now, what else have I got here? I've got some paprika. Oh, I've got some of my homemade turkey seasoning, which we did a few weeks back when we were doing turkey. Um, and what I did was I made the seasoning and now I dehydrated it. In other words, took the moisture out of it. And here we are. I've got beautiful aromatic turkey seasoning, or I can use it on chicken. Um, no cost, because I was just using up stuff. So the first thing that we're gonna need is to think about what we're going to do. Um, what would you put in a pepper? Let's let's do some fun stuff here. Because different people like to make it different ways. And I'm going to start by taking the turkey and the seasoning. And I'm just going to break that up a little bit. Now, we know that... Um, one serving is three ounces of turkey. So, and this is probably more than I need. So I might make enough to do some more for tomorrow or something. All right. So there we've got our three ounces. And, oh, interesting. Jody's saying, what about putting in some dried cranberries? Why? Because we know cranberries are good for our liver. And so let's do that. Oh, by the way, for those of you here at lunchtime, and I was telling you about, <laughs> um, if you want to,
do your wash and then keep things in outfits. Do you see how I cut the a slice of my toilet roll? And now I know that's my outfit for Monday. And I've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right? So it goes into the cupboard. And I took a picture of the whole lot. Ah. Oh, there we go. Um, just so you could get an idea. There we go. So get the idea. Now it looks very black and white. It's not actually, um, but I noticed that most of the tops were black. And the reason is because I'm inclined to wear color on my um, t-shirts and things. Okay, so here we go, some cranberries. Now we know we've bought your cam cranberries this week. So let's do that. And I think I'm just gonna mince them up with the, with the turkey. No reason why not to. And what seasonings, oh, we've got the seasoning in there already, but I think I'm gonna put a bit of paprika in there. It's probably got some. Oh, that wasn't paprika, that was chili. Nice. Uh, and then a little bit more extra paprika, just because we can. And let's just mince that all up. We have minced turkey. Please do not buy minced turkey. Buy the turkey breast, a whole one, cook the whole thing, slice it. And as you saw, that uh, those strips that I had, we cooked them a couple of weeks ago. So I did some uh, turkey strips, I did some finely cut turkey, like roast turkey dinner. And then if I want minced turkey, all right, I just put it in my blender like this. So that's the first thing. Let's get a bowl out here so we can mix it all up. So what else do we need other than the turkey? Let's start with the turkey. We'll get that in. What else do you like to put in your stuffed um, peppers? Now, the reason that I ask the viewers is because we get some great ideas doing that. I know what I'm going to put in or what I think I'm going to put in, but sometimes the viewers give me ideas and I go, oh, that'd be really good. <laughs> so we're going to need three different things, right? We're going to need the meat. Um, we're going to need a little bit of a marinade, marinade. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Sauce. <laughs> so, um, and then, why, why can't I say that right? Um, and then the third thing normally is some rice, all right? And so I cooked up a little bit of brown rice. And Let's mix that in. So I would say about equal quantities of rice to turkey. And it's okay to have some left. I know what I'm going to do with that. And then I'm going to put in with this... Um, mashed carrot Let's put that in there and I'm going to put in the corn all 
And we're going to keep the leaves for decoration. We'll put those there. And we're just going to mix all this up. So you can already see it's looking pretty colorful. Yes, Jody's saying, what about some celery? Any extra vegetables? Uh, I might, you know, she's saying that she might add couscous rather than rice. You could also do quinoa, um, right? So depending what it is that you've got left over in the fridge. So let's put the celery in now. Oops. You can't go yet, tomato. All right, so that would leave us with tomatoes. Oh, I've got some Brussels sprouts here. Some bits of Brussels sprouts because I want to use them up. No, too big. some Brussels sprouts. I've got, you could have onions, but I am going to use uh, leeks instead because I'm using up some leeks. Another green. We like the green. A little bit of carrot left over there. And then I'm going to put the tomatoes in. Now I might add more tomatoes. I just, I'm trying to only cook for one meal at a time. <laughs> As I said, my freezer is now overflowing. So let's see how that goes. see that that's chopped up pretty well all right oh yes Jody's thinking maybe some mushrooms well guess what I've got some dried mushrooms dehydrated very nice addition if I can find them yep there they are and I really recommend that if you you know have something that you don't you like to eat but not often and that is what it is for me with mushrooms, all right? So I buy them dehydrated like this. And then when I feel like adding some mushroom, I can do it. Very good idea. Thank you, Jody. And we also need to add in the cheese. So I think the camembert, I mean the brie is what I'm thinking. And I'm just literally going to take one of those wedges and put that in there. What did I do with them? There we go. And because we're just filling one, I'm going to take the smaller wedge of cheese there. Uh, how many of you would add maybe some breadcrumbs? All right, so Jody's asking, do you like radishes? Yes, uh, I'm growing radishes uh, as part of my microgreens. I'm growing radishes. So I can prove that. <laughs> um, very good. So uh, I've got some broccoli microgreens that I will add on at the last, you know, just to give it that extra color and to give it that extra nutrient as well. So let me now see what happens with the brie. Okay, so this is a little too dry. So what I'm going to do is to add some liquid to it.
and now I've got a sauce. Now, what have I got here? Hi, is this saying, I love stuffed peppers. I do them very simply now. Maybe tomorrow night, thanks for the idea. That's why I do this, right? just to remind us all. Um, is this saying, radishes, I'm not used to them a lot. I eat almost anything. Yes, I love them in my salads. If That's the place I most eat radishes. But now I'm eating the microgreens. All right, so what I'm going to do is to add this sauce, if you like, to our mix and mix that up. Now we don't want too much liquid. And we know that the, the rice will absorb some of it, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of uh, breadcrumbs and these are my dehydrated sourdough, um, just to make sure that it's not too wet. What I'm looking for is for it to sort of be able to clump together. Can you see that? In other words, you could make a meatball out of it if you wanted to. Now, you remember I said I'm trying very hard <laughs> to just cook one meal each time. From those little bits that we put together, can you see how much we have got here? So I have failed miserably in that attempt. But now I'm going to stuff them. I really like the idea of putting the cranberries in there. That looks pretty pretty. Ah, pretty pretty. Very funny. Now, I've got about a cup of the mixture left, and it's going to be really difficult for me to not save it. All right, Isabel's saying it's the smell is very strong when I use them. Oh, the radishes, yeah. Oh, you get them in your good food box. That's a good idea. Yeah, Jody's saying she has the same problem, right? She makes filling for four peppers and ends up with enough for eight. So what else would you do with the leftover, Jody? Because there's probably a cup of leftover here. And I'm thinking I've possibly got a visitor coming tomorrow. So what if I load up another, another pepper and I can just warm them up tomorrow? Not a bad idea, right? but I will do that after the broadcast. But I have enough there for to load up another one. Oh, or at least make another one during the week. But as part of my meal tomorrow, if I do it, I could have half a pepper.
So now I'm going to cook it at 350 in the air fryer. And I'm going to take some things out of the air fryer that I started to cook before. Oh, that's a good idea, Jody. I've got a zucchini. She's saying I could use what's left over to fill a zucchini. Just a different option and very healthy. And I do have a zucchini. And again, I could do that tomorrow as well. All right. Very good thinking. Thank you. So I'm going to cover that. And I've got a small one. Oh, these are all bigger ones. Yeah, they're all bigger ones. Okay. That will do. All right, that's going back in the fridge. Now, I was warming up the oven with a little bit of leftover mashed potato. Looks good, doesn't it? I also cooked an, another couple of uh, Brussels sprouts. And the day that we did the turkey, I also made turkey gravy. So I'm going to be putting this into the blender because when you reconstitute it from there, it's inclined to look a bit strange. So I'm going to put it back in the blender and make gravy. And that tastes really good. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I kept that. Mmm, that tastes good. Yum. So let's do that. But in the meantime, let's get these in. Sort this out. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. Not too much. I don't know about you, but if I have gravy, um, what I like is it to be a little thicker when it's turkey. The reason I wanted the gravy and everything is because I, oh, Jody, um, you still can't see me? Uh, it's still recording on my side. Let me just type that for her. Yeah, I will tell her on a. Messenger, hold on one second. Uh, right, so can you <laughs> can you hear me as they say? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it had it, I, I, there was a glitch in um, YouTube, I think, because it told me the chat had disconnected. So hopefully everybody is still back. Is are you still there as well and anybody else that's around? I did notice when I did that. Okay, now good. Thanks, Joe. Let me just see because I think I saw. Another comment. Okay, not something I need to answer right now. All right, so that's good. Thanks, Liz. So there is the gravy all ready to go.
Now, here is the thing I want you to think about. The meat is already cooked, remember? Because I cook my roasts first, and then I cut them into different sizes, slices or chunks or whatever. So we know that the meat's done. We know the rice is done. We know that we chopped up the vegetables very finely. So basically, this probably won't take half an hour to cook. It may only take about 15 minutes, which is awesome. But in the meantime, we want to have some cheese. Now, one thing, one thing that I read was that you want to put cheese on top so the rice doesn't go crispy. I don't know about you, but I'd quite like the top of the, that rice to be crispy and then put the cheese on top of that. So once I feel that we've got most of it cooked, which will be in about 15 minutes, I'm then going to maybe grill it a little bit just so that I can get those, that top layer of um, rice crispy. And then I'm going to put the, yeah, crispy bits, yum. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I went to a house somewhere to have dinner, and they made a sort of spaghetti pie. And the hostess apologized for the crispiness of the corners. And I said, excuse me, I'm sorry if this makes me a bad guest, but I like crispy corners, please. And then the other, there was a guy there, and he said, and I would like the other two. <laughs> you know? So it was just like, who doesn't like crispy Cheesy, mm. wonderful, but not for everybody, apparently. I personally thought it was um, a, a technique that, that I needed to know how she did it. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so we've had the seasoning. We've done with that. Um, I didn't put salt and pepper in. Ah, you see, Lionel and I have so much in common, don't we? As you and I do, Jody. <laughs> Jody's saying, when I make spaghetti pie, Lionel wishes that the entire casserole was corners. Absolutely, I agree. By the way, I did have other options. I had cream cheese available. And I thought, but I think the camembert, I didn't need cream cheese. You agree? But you understand if you don't have... Um, when I had the brie cheese in there, I didn't think I needed cream cheese as well. But if you want to, you could add that as part of your mix. And as usual, um, I didn't put garlic in because I am allergic. But if you like garlic, obviously huck that in as well. So we're going to put some cheese ready. Now, what I want to do... is I want to do a mixture of Parmesan which has a flavor all of its own and of this Gloucester cheese sometimes I tidy up the wrong things. I'm just going to put this back to remind me this is the Gloucester. This is really, it's like a strong cheddar, if you like. That's how I would describe it. And into here, I am going to put some pepper. Um, this is, I buy the assorted peppers, so it's got white, black, and red pepper in there. And that gives it lots of interesting tastes. And for those of you who don't know, pepper is really good for your metabolism and very good for you. So do that. Um, I don't, I'm not going to put salt in because we've got cheese and cheese already has a lot of sodium. But 
if you don't have high blood pressure or anything like that, obviously you can do that without any problem at all. So let's whip this up quickly. There we go. You see how nicely that made beautiful shredded cheese in a hot beat. Wonderful. Now, I've also got some what was dehydrated parsley here, and I'm actually going to include that in there. And all I did was I put it um, in some water just to rehydrate it. And again, parsley was from my garden last year. Okay, so that's made it a little lumpy because of the moisture. So we're going to put in some more. Ah, look at that. Keep I'm going to put in some more Parmesan. And that should balance it out. So there we've got the cheese topping all ready to go. And we've got some celery. And I'm also going to cut a little bit of micronutrients. It's my new thing. Uh, and those are um, just um, baby broccoli. And they have a really nice taste to them. I love it. I've got some big ones here, but I want those for tomorrow. So I just cut these here, second row here a little bit. Yeah. How many of you can see that what we've got is a, a, hopefully a filling, pretty substantial meal, all right? So I'm not depriving myself because it's Friday and I eat well on Fridays. <laughs> what I'm doing is making the best meal I can with the leftovers. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so let's do this. Yep. Okay, as you can see, the rice is already browning, so it's wonderful. Just what we wanted. And so I'm going to put the cheese on top. And all over, apparently. Oh, oh, not a good idea, that's so. Yum. And I'm now going to put it back and brown it. Ah, 
I'm getting hungry. <laughs> and we've done this in about three quarters of an hour, but I had pre-cooked the rice and I had grilled the potatoes already. Now, the other thing is uh, I'm trying to watch my portion control, so I use a smaller plate rather than a full dinner plate. What about you guys? <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Jody's saying, I'm getting hungry too. You always do this to us on Fridays. You're a great cook. I don't think I'm a great cook. I, I love to play. You know that. So... But what I like to do is to give everybody, when did you last have stuffed pepper thinking, all right? Because that's what is important. And especially, um, especially just using leftovers. That's the whole thing I keep trying to show people is don't throw away your food. You can use it for so many things. And if you're throwing away your food every week, it means you're buying too much. And if your freezer is overflowing like mine is, you're cooking too much. So let's see how we're going to do this. We know that we're going to need half the plate for those two peppers. So now looks so good. Um, I think I'm going to need two. I've got to get the peppers out. I don't want them over browned, so to speak. That is warm. So as you can see, the cheeses were just turning, and that's I like them like that. And because we loaded up with Parmesan, uh, it's not going to bubble because Parmesan doesn't do that. You know, it's, there was more Parmesan than uh, regular cheese. But let's load it up and see how it looks. Quite honestly, I think one of those is enough for me. And I'm not going to put two on my plate just to show willing. So I'm just going to take half the potato as well. There we go. And I'm going to put the Brussels sprouts on. We like that. And I don't know about you, but we are missing red so hang on one second and 
Oh, gravy, 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 gravy. Yum. My favorite bit. Now, apparently, I'm not coming back for seconds. <laughs> Is this saying I'm eating mushroom soup? Because I heard today in the broadcast. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and you're not influenced. Uh, I want to tell you, I buy my mushroom soup by the case because it is the greatest thing I know to turn a little bit of turkey into a gourmet meal if you want it to. So there we go. So we've got the colors and we've got the taste. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a really nice evening meal. And there's a little bit of mashed potato, but I halved it. I didn't put all of it on. There is some rice, but I didn't use it all. I just used a bit. There are a little bit of uh, breadcrumbs in there, but not a whole lot. And the rest of it is pretty good stuff. So, you know, that to me will taste like a gourmet meal. That gravy that we made two weeks ago still tastes wonderful. So there we have it, well balanced, and <laughs> it's going to be well enjoyed, I can tell you that. And we did it all, that, there we go, in less than an hour. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope it gave you some food for thought. Before we go, just think about this. What can you stuff peppers with? What meats? Any meat. You could have used, I could have used bacon, could have used ham, could have used pork, could have used beef, could have used anything. And you can just mince it up in, in a, a blender, all right? That's the thing to remember. Don't pay for somebody else to mince your meat. Then remember that you can put any vegetables you want to in there, all right? And you could have put rice, quinoa. Um, what else could we use? I'm thinking here. Oh, barley. How about barley? Do any of you cook barley instead of rice? That's very good if you've got diabetes, all right? So think about these things, lots of choices, and you end up with a really nice plate of food. This is Dear Mama Sal saying thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's do it again next Friday. Jody's saying, I've seen ground beef with taco seasoning put in peppers with a Mexican blend cheese. The endless possibilities. That's what I wanted you to know and wanted you to think about. Enjoy your stuffed peppers. This is Dear Mama Sal saying we'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye for now. Thanks, Jody.